So I forgot to turn on the mic. I'm coming later now this evening after the live stream and I'm going to voice over the first part half that I missed with the microphone. I had a super busy day today. It was a go, go, go day and uh, I started at 8.30 and worked straight through. In fact, 40 minutes before I came to my live stream, I finally finished mixing all the paint for that little, that little painting that I'm going to work on. So I just want to say thank you for coming and for watching. My The voiceover is not going to match my, my mouth, and uh, that's kind of interesting. I had a couple of paintings here. Uh, my poem, Grosbeak, is on eBay auction, and uh, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. It took me 14 hours to paint that little baby, but I'm really thrilled with how it turned out. It is live on eBay. The link will be below after I upload this new voiceover version of the live stream. I'm talking here about the other painting that just finished being auctioned. It arrived at its new roosting place with a woman named Patty and her daughter and son-in-law bought it for her. She was quite thrilled with that and excited. Now I did a color study because what I want to do with the background is I want to use imitation gold um, or imitation silver leaf on it. So I did this little color study. Oops, I'm going to put the painting down. This is the, the bird that won, the yellow warbler. It won by five votes. Uh, the Instagram folks chose the yellow-headed blackbird, but overall the yellow warbler won. So this is the color study that I'm talking about. I did two different values and two different blues. So a value nine and a value eight. Whew, it's really shiny. And I did a value nine and eight of a gold color. And then I put the silver and gold leaf over it. I wish I had actually done gold leaf onto the, the blue to see what it's going to look like. I'm going to have to come back and do that color study because the shapes that I've chosen for behind the birds is different than this practice shape that I've done. And I'm sorry that my mouth and my words are not matching. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to play with this. This is going to be fun. I have not done this. And on Thursdays, that's kind of what I want to do is do paintings that I wouldn't necessarily do in my larger paintings just to play and see what that means. It may inform a painting at a later date. I'm not actually very good at mouth reading, so I have no idea what I'm saying, but there you go. <laughs> Here we are starting the painting. I've got it drawn out. You can see the color study closer up and the subtle blues are very subtle that I ch and I chose the value 9 chroma 2 of 2.5 purple blue, which actually is cerulean blue and, and grayed out with um, a neutral gray paint. So I'm really pleased with doing these yellow warblers. I love yellow warblers. They are so feisty and, and they travel such a distance to come to Yellowknife. And they spend a short time in Yellowknife. They spend long enough to eat lots of mosquitoes and have their babies and have several rounds of babies. And then they head right back down to the Caribbean and into um, the far south of of Mexico and that area. They're amazing little birds and they are feisty. So I started with this this pale blue that I've chosen. It's almost gray on purpose. I've lowered the chroma of it so that it will be in the background and the gold leaf or silver leaf, whichever I decide on my new color study, will be more realistic looking. I'm 
today it was a crazy busy day. Like it was absolutely wall to wall crazy. Getting ready for my videos that are my video that is coming out tomorrow for my acrylic 101 class, uh, my basics for beginners class, lesson five will be coming out. And I was sitting working on something, painting, doing my work, and I could hear a raven in the backyard. Now, there's always birds in my backyard because I'm always feeding them, and it's talking and talking and talking. And finally, I think okay, what is going on? So I go to the window and is there not a fox in the backyard? The raven is right beside it, talking at it, telling it to go away. And the fox has found a piece of chicken from yesterday that the ravens missed. How is that even possible? And he's eating the peanuts and he's kind of paying attention to the raven, but not totally and just doing its thing. And it's an interesting fox because it's kind of a combination fox. It's not an orange fox and it's not a black fox. It kind of had both those colors in it, sort of a hybrid looking fox. Anyway, it was totally fun to see that. And uh, if you had an interesting wildlife experience recently, put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. It's just a lot of fun to have birds around or other animals around. And I knew the fox was coming in our yard because I've seen where it's been peeing and, and marking its territory. So I'm continuing to work. I'm j just taking my time. I will do two layers at least of this background. Because life was so busy, I didn't even get a chance to pull out all of the colors that I had mixed to uh, be able to work on the green. So my focus is going to be the, the bird and the branch today and next week I will have it almost completed uh, and I will have the decision about how I'm going to do the imitation gold or, or silver leaf onto it. So I'm building it up slowly and taking my time. You know I just am started you know trying to to integrate putting regular videos out and doing live streams and and figuring out how to use my time in its best way. These yellow warblers come and they arrive just as the, I mean, snow is still there and sometimes it's still frozen cold and they arrive here. And I wonder about their journey being so long. We're almost done the blue. And I'm going to do the edge as well on this. I haven't done that in the last couple paintings and I really like the look when the edge is covered with the same kind of blue. I'm getting rid of any of the ridges that I'm noticing because I don't want any of the paint to dry hard with ridges. So I'm looking and I'm really moving around the, uh, the board and making sure that there are no ridges. And here I go cleaning up the edges and making them. It's the easiest time to do it is when you're working on the background and filling that all in because then I don't have to worry about a finished painting on top and ending up with paint that dries where I don't want it to dry. That has happened to me before. So I'm just going to do the top and the side and the bottom and I will do the, the, the two sides and the top because I can't reach the bottom and I'll do that later. There's lots of parts to think about when you're preparing to get ready for a new painting. First, there's the design, and I thank everyone who voted for it. It was fun to see that the bluebird and the yellow-headed blackbird 
which were also in contention, had equal amount of votes, and the little yellow warbler had... Oops, there I go. There's my head. <laughs> had five more votes than the other two. So it won handily. The last vote we everybody voted in, the bird won by one single vote. It was pretty amazing. So now I'm coming in and I will start working on the little warbler. What's interesting is this warbler is sort of side lit, not like back lit, not really lit in the front. And I'm going to have to do some work to make the eyes look more alive, which I will do later. So I'm just starting with the very edge of this and, and realizing the color I have is not quite the right color, but I'll come back and correct that. You know, you know, you start where you start and then you come back and make the corrections as you have something to compare to because right now it's compared to that pale blue and white. And so it's hard to see if the value is right. It's hard to see where I'm going with it. And I do turn on the microphone here at about 24 minutes, 25 minutes. So I'll just do the voiceover till that point and then I'll be frustrated. You'll hear the frustration in my voice. When I made this yellow string, I started with a cadmium yellow medium because that seemed to be where it was located in my Munzel book when I, because I match it with chips and everything, the, the image. And then I used a combination of raw umber and burnt umber to darken the yellow and keep it within the yellow family so that it looks correct and, but has the values that I need. So I'm just building up the shape. This first pass is fairly quick. I will come and do, I'm not sure what I'm pointing at there. I will come and build it up and then come back and make tweaks as I need to. So you can see that there's more yellow near the bottom. You can see where there's a little bit of light just underneath the, the at the top of the feather. And I'm going to come in and it's really chromatic where the sun's not like not directly on because the sun is washed out and it often does wash out the colors. And I will come and put that almost white with a touch of yellow in it near the end when I'm just doing all the final tweaks. I did a series of yellow warbler paintings of them building a nest. So I'm putting in the beak. I didn't have the right colors because I just plain ran out of time for uh, getting the, the right colors out onto my palette. I just like I got out what I could and then started. It was a busy day. It was kind of crazy. So I'm just building up the shape as it's coming up. I will correct this shape again because I often end up with it looking too round or not, you know, or too flat or, and, and it takes a little bit of work to get my shapes correct, especially when I'm talking and painting at the same time. So I've noticed that there's some darker underneath at the, in the belly near the, where the claws are its little feet and I'm building that up and I've got my eyes squinted while I'm doing it because it helps me to see 
if it's working together. Build that shape and you'll notice I'm even moving my brush the same way as the body shape because by building that shape up I'm uh, and having the paint move in the same way it's very helpful. I'm mixing up colors, I guess, or figuring out what I'm, or standing back and looking at it to see where I'm at. I haven't quite figured out the microphone is not on and I'm yitter yattering away. <laughs> well, to myself, obviously. <laughs> I have to say this adventure of doing live streams is kind of interesting and not always what you think it's going to be. So I come and do the eye. I don't have a dark enough value for the eye, but I will fix that. Um, I just want to make sure I've got it the shape in as correct as possible and I will and get that in there as correct. And now I'm bringing my brush and I'm just kind of moving the paint around a bit and softening the edges. It's very cool in my room because normally I come down an hour before and put the, the heater on to warm up my room. But today was one of those days that that didn't happen. So here is the dark side of that little wing, which I find really fascinating. They're yellow birds, and yet they have such dark areas that you don't really pay attention to when they're flashing past you so quickly. And they do move quickly, these little ones. I'm saying there that um, I couldn't get the greens out to be able to do the little bits of greens that you're seeing on the branches as the leaves are starting to come out. So let's work on this tail and see what we can get for the shape of it. The first pass is just getting information in. The second pass is for refining it and the third pass is for all the little tweaks that bring the painting to life and bring that sense of roundness, that illusion of roundness that I'm going to create on the bird on a flat board. I think that value is a little dark. I'm, I'll come back and tweak it and lighten it as I go along. Again, it's really hard to see what the value is without the darkest parts in. And I come in with my clean brush and I just gently move that paint around to sort of make it more transparent and less dark as I build in towards that space. We're getting close to when I was going to turn on the, turn off the microphone and realize I hadn't turned it on. So here we go with the tail and the dark parts and getting those shapes in. And it's a little lighter as it goes up. So I wanted to make sure I captured that nuance. And I'm getting close to the microphone coming on and then I'll stop the voice over here. I like the fact that you can see that there was wind happening because the feathers of the chest along the edge um, of the bird are sort of flung across. Now we're starting on the branch. I'm going to put the dark on the bottom and then put the lighter on the top and it kind of looks like a line but I will blend it together to make it look more round. 
what I noticed is that the blue sky is being reflected off of the branch. And later on, I'll talk about that and show you as I put almost a transparent little bit of that blue because it's not, it's just laying on top of the branch. I purposefully kept this image without much of a background because I want to do the gold leaf or the silver leaf over top of it. So it has a lot of background that will be patterned. And I picked a really fun pattern that I'm going to put onto it. And you'll see that when I finish the painting after my next live stream. So next week I will work on finalizing this painting. It'll only be a two week live stream and then we'll be on to the next one whatever that one is I haven't even thought about that one yet have to do that soon so we can do our voting I'm building it up so I have just two different low chroma yellows that I'm working with and so it just uh Nice and simple. I don't even know if it's low chroma. Oh, maybe it's low chroma orange, actually. I'm going to clean up the edge here. I know that the paint is not fully set and dry, so I'm very lightly touching it with a damp brush to push that paint away and to clean up those edges. And I wasn't sure I'd be able to pull that one out because it might be, have dried, but the room is cool enough today that it didn't dry. And I'm about to figure out the microphone wasn't turned on. In just a second, reshaping, and I'll reshape that as I work along. I didn't put the sound at all on. Oh, okay, this is not good. Hi, we'll start this again. This is Painting with Shauna. We're halfway through the painting. You've been listening to Absolute Silence because I forgot in all of my little crazy busyness today to turn on the sound. I apologize. I'm going to continue with the bird. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, here I am saying, I, okay, now I'll tell you about the Raven incident. So today I was paint like today has been absolutely crazy, crazy, crazy day. And I worked from 9.30, 8.30 this morning, right through till half 45 minutes before 40 minutes before I was to go live which meant I was in a rush and I forgot to put the sound on and here we are halfway through the video and now I've put the sound on and I apologize oh my goodness gracious so I'm working away upstairs and I'm hearing this raven talking and talking and talking because I have them hanging around in my backyard um and um, anyway, finally, I, I think, what is going on? And I go back and go and look, and there's the raven talking to a fox, because a fox is in the backyard eating peanuts and getting some stuff that I guess the ravens missed uh, yesterday when I fed them some leftover chicken stuff. Ah. Uh. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Twice and like that's twice. No, last week it was a technical problem. Ah. Yes, being too busy is not a good idea when you're 
doing live streams. I apologize. If you're still here, you might not even be here. I might have to go and do a voiceover for it and, and re-put it up so that um, it's, yeah. Ah, jeez. Okay, so I'm just doing the second layer. I was going to put the sound off and put the dryer, the hair dryer on it, but it dried fast enough that I can continue to work. Okay, that's a little bit too dark, so let's bring some lighter in to lighten it up. Actually, I'm going to go just pull back some of that paint. And I've got my eyes squinted while I'm working because I want it to be as accurate as possible value-wise so that I'm creating that sense of form. What's really interesting in this is that the wind must be blowing because the feathers are being blown here. And I will do that uh, later when I can concentrate because, yes, I'll need to do that later. So let's put some patterning in here. It's not exactly the... We'll just get that shapes in there. Six thirty. Okay. Yes, being too busy is not a good thing for all the other planning things you have to do. All the little details, because it makes you impatient and you don't pay attention. Okay. So I'm just putting those lines in. They're not really put in very nicely. I probably should do a smaller brush, and that would probably be that a better option. Let's see what brush I can find that would give me the chutzpah to do what I need to do. Anyway, that the fox was interesting because he was neither an orange fox or a black fox. It was kind of a mixture fox, which I thought was interesting. So I, I said earlier, when the sound wasn't on, that um, the Yellow Warbler won by five votes. Um, it, uh, I'm just putting shapes in here. Uh, the Instagram people who have to leave a comment underneath and uh, who leave comments underneath or, or DM me, they chose the yellow-headed blackbird predominant that's that was what won there but overall everybody else chose um, the bluebird and the blackbird and ended up in the same amount of votes even let's get that wet a little bit and the the yellow little yellow warbler here which is not very looking very pretty right now they go through a really ugly stage paintings do as you're starting them and starting to get things laid in place and okay other thing I'm seeing is the shape here I've got this shape really wrong so let's get that shape more correct by just coming and looking and Okay, come on, paint. Hello. And then there's some that comes down here and comes up here. No, those not the exactly the right value, but it's a good place to start, and then I can tweak it as I go along in the next layer. The first layer is never the most perfect layer. It's just about trying to get the values where you're seeing it and making sure the shapes are where you need them to be. So I'm just building it up. Okay, standing back, I can see that this comes around here some of that darker paint here into here 
and down to here. And then there's a little bit that comes up here. And now I'm going to have to get the hair blower because it is needing, it's kind of cool down here. I didn't even have time to heat up my room. So I'm going to shut the sound off for a second and hit the hair blower. And the sound is back on. <laughs> so I, th I think when it, the sound was off, I don't know what I said now, but uh, I congratulated the, the person who received the, the Frosty Raven. Um, she she uh, didn't know what was coming. It was a gift from her daughter and son-in-law. And uh, it was a lovely gift. And so I had lots of fun adding in a Valentine's Day card and I really find putting those packages together quite a lot of fun. So I'm going to take some of this bright yellow, lighter yellow, put it on the edge, need more, more uh, coming down here. I can't believe I forgot and didn't put the sound on again this week. Huh? Okay, now we're starting to see it come to life. Okay, so I'm going to come in and clean this edge up here because I can see there's some light coming through there, but it's probably way too much light. So let's put some of the darker in there just to build that shape up. and come and correct that. So what you didn't hear earlier, and I will bring that up now, is, okay, I'm sure I'm gonna bring that up now. Where did you go? Two things. Okay, they're hiding on me now. Oh, here it is. What you didn't hear earlier, because I had no sound, is I made a color study because what I want to do with this background, which is very plain, I want to, to um, I wanted to check out different blues to see which blue I like the best. And I like this value nine um, blue that um, is, uh, is not quite as grayed down as this blue is. It's a little, got a little bit more color to it. Um, if you saw it next to the blue, you would think that it was almost gray, but by itself it looks that way. And then I created two gold colors, value uh, 9 and value 8, and I had fun putting on the, uh, um, the imitation gold and silver leaf. So I haven't figured out if because the shapes I'm going to do in the back of this are different than, than this shape. This is just a, a, a color study shape. Um, I haven't figured out uh, if I'm going to do gold on the background. So I actually am going to make another color study with the blue and put some gold on it and see if I like that before I launch into here. Because once you put the, the imitation gold leaf on or the silver leaf, you can't take it off. I guess you could paint over it, but that's not my goal, is to be painting over it. So that's uh, letting that dry out a little bit. And I'm coming back. So if you're on Facebook, say hello. And I'm sorry that I made it difficult by not remembering to put my sound on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to make a big list that says, did you put the sound on? <laughs> okay, so far it's coming. Can you see how the bird is coming? Let's kind of look on the branch here. 
The branch is really interesting because it's actually, it's plane is facing towards the sky and so it has some blue on there once we get the, the shape of the, the branch in there. So let's get some of the darker value. I'm going to spritz my paint again. And I'm going to tune that darker value down on this bottom side and building up that second layer. It was a whirlwind day today. Tomorrow's I'm putting out a video um, at 4 p.m. Friday. Uh, they go live and it's my fifth video of my acrylic painting 101 basics for beginners series that I'm I'm working on so it's basically the class that I've been teaching in Yellowknife since 2014 and I'm I'm uh, putting it videos online so I'm still working on video oh, I'm still working on videos for it um, I was working on uh, two videos earlier this week and I will get back to those tomorrow uh, recording them Okay, just get that dark on the bottom. So my blog post will go live. Um, uh, tomorrow at four o'clock, the same time the video does. So I don't know if you're interested in those. Oh, that's a little light. I wanted to lighten it up, but not that much. Okay, now let's get that. There we go. I'm just coming in, building that branch shape as I'm working along. So if you're still on social media and you didn't disappear because there was no sound, say hello. I will come upstairs and after the after my live stream and um, come and respond to your comments so earlier I asked if you had um, when there was no sound <laughs> um, I was talking about that experience I had with the raven and the fox in the backyard there's always something happening in my backyard and I kind of asked if you, you know if you wanted to leave in the comments the, um, that you uh, um, if you had a, a wildlife experience this week and uh, what that was like, it also warmed up in Yellowknife, which is lovely because it's been really cold. So that's lovely, but it was, I mean, it was supposed to go up to minus eight today. I don't know if it did. I didn't even get a chance to look outside other than when the raven was uh, chattering about the fox. I looked outside and went, oh yeah, okay. Had to go grab my camera to take some pictures. But that doesn't always work so well through the windows. Okay. Okay. Just softening the edges here. Just gonna pull those. I'll do another layer on this because it's too linear right now. It's it's I want that. Yeah, you want it to be look like it's round, not like it's two lines coming together. Like that's what it's been doing here. So we'll just work on that here for a second. Create some Paint on my brush. The eBay auction for the Pine Grosbeak is out and, and up and running. I haven't even looked at it because that's what kind of day I had today. There was no time for sitting at the computer and getting those, those kind of things done. Okay. I'm happy with that. I can slender that out when I put the background on again because I have to do another layer of the background. Okay, 
Let's look at the foot here. We're just going to put a, the foot in place and then I'll come back and get all the values correct later. Just want to get their shapes in place here. Okay. And there's one more here. And then I see the leg comes here so that I can get that rounded shape there and I see some light shapes right on the edge it's even lighter because it's really capturing the Sun then I'm putting it on but that's all right and then here's these shapes here there's a bit of the of the claw coming in behind the back uh, toe and then we've got it's kind of interesting it's building th these shapes up here I'm just going to lighten that up a little bit by just putting in some of the lighter paint and there's the the leg going up right make sure I got that angle right I'm just gonna back up make sure I have that angle right and it goes right over to this edge here right there and now I can come in and I can see that I have some underneath spritz my paints um, underneath here area that I sort of just didn't even notice was there because I was gonna build this shape up I'm looking back and forth while I'm painting the most dangerous thing you can do is when you're painting is to stop looking at what you're painting and just be focused in on painting because you get kind of lost in your own little world and then all of a sudden you realize that that's not exactly what you were wanting to paint and then you have to paint over so it's back and forth back and forth and it's up here and and I can see I even have this a little bit thick but that's can be fixed okay that's getting better getting closer to where I'm seeing the shapes and it comes right underneath there and comes around here too I can see some light over here that's kind of interesting the feathers are are in movement and so they're capturing a little bit more light over here in a way that you wouldn't think but when you're looking closely you can see okay now the thing with the eye is the eye is in the dark and it's not going to have much highlight but we can put a highlight in there simply by taking some of this sky I need a smaller brush some of this sky color and having it look like it's reflecting in there because it is a little bit doing that oh and that's way too much paint so I'm just gonna dry my brush off clean it off dry it off and then move that paint around and it helps to give the eye the bird eye a little bit of definition when you do that okay I'm gonna come around here there's some areas that are really whited out on the bird because the Sun is so bright and so strong and I can come back to that and create that but I'm just working on building up that shape and that understanding that the light goes around the head a little bit here and bring in some of that brighter color that more chromatic yellow 
it's amazing how um, the yellows only in the sunlight are bright, but how um, what the colors are, the values are on elsewhere on this bird when you think you're looking at a yellow bird. I always find that quite intriguing. Okay, build some shapes here. Round we go. And there is almost a little bit of a glow around the edge here, I can see. And then there's some of these feathers pulling out. So I'm just going to do that, even though I'm going to have to come back and do that after the, the, um, uh, after, um, I get the background completed because it's not quite completed, but I can just give that understanding that that's there. So it's not quite as thick as that. Just gonna just clean up the edges here and touch it. Okay. Okay, so we have about five or six more minutes and uh, and then I will call it quits and we will look at, you know, the other things I'm going to do here, talk about other things. When I get to this point, I find that I have to really concentrate on the bird and uh, talking and, and painting at the same time. Uh, some people are amazing at it. I'm just trying to figure that out. So I'm trying to figure out where, what the shape is, what I'm seeing without all my colors being out because I ran out of time. Should have taken a few more minutes and I would have remembered to put the sound on. Okay, so let's work on this area here. So we have some of the lighter area here along the edge. You can see I'm working with a really small brush now because I want to get that those those shapes in. And I'm going to come and correct this shape with the background because I can see that um, I, I've not got it as rounded as it needs to be. So i just pull that here, clean my brush, come around and do that. Create that sense of roundness there. Just slowly pushing the paint forward. And I'll correct that when I do the next background coat. Okay, let's get underneath here. I always find it so interesting to see how the bird's tails are from one direction to the next. You know, it's... You wouldn't even know that it would look like this when it's looking at you. And I can see feathers, uh, the stems of the feathers, the central area of the feather. Bring that around. And get that shape. Oh, I've cut off that feather a bit when I was editing it. Let's get some of this brighter yellow in here. moving it around and getting it in place. Probably a slightly bigger brush would be probably a little bit easier to manage. Okay, and I'm going to come in and get this this here going. That's a little too dark. There we go. It's still probably too dark, but that's fine. I can work from there. And then that so little part is dark. Okay, there we go. Building up slowly our, our values and our shifts and trying to make them subtly shift as the light is moving along.
Okay, so here's the thing I wanted to show you is that the sky is reflecting on the branch. Let's spray, spritz everything again. And it's causing some interesting shapes to happen here. So I've taken the, a blue that's a darker value than, uh, than here. And I don't want it to be that firm. I need a different brush here. Maybe that brush will work. I'm going to come and just sort of pounce it around and soften it because it's a reflection on the from the sky so it's not a bright blue it's a grayed out blue and I want it to be softer so take that out of my hand and I'm going to build up here a little bit and I'm going to take my other clean brush and I'm just going to move it around a little bit just to give that hint of that blue being on there. There's um, lots over here, which is really interesting. But again, I don't want it to be... Um, oh, wrong brush. Grab the right brush standing there. I don't want it to be the strong blue because that's not what it's looking like. It's just has that hint of blue on the branch. It's amazing how reflective most objects are and what you can see in the objects when you get closer to them and look closely. So that gives that hint of the sky looking like it's reflecting, but it's not a bright blue. It's, it's a fairly transparent blue. I'm just going to soften these edges. Okay. Clean my brushes off. Come in with a little bit more of that, that light blue for the eye to give it more dimension. I'm taking little bits of paint to move them around. If I was to see this picture electronically and move it bigger, I could see that it would have some reflection because the eye is rounded. It would reflect a little bit of the sky, even in the shade. I don't want to give too much. I just want to give it a sense of that. Come in, darken underneath there. Okay, I can see this shape needs to come down a little bit more. So let's bring some of that darker value in and get this, this shape corrected. Okay. And then bring the lighter value in. Slightly lighter. And help to, with that correction a little further. And then I see that it comes up here. And it comes down here. It comes in here and up to there. And then let's get this shape here in place. And that's with that more of that red in there. So I'm going to put some of that, those lines in that, um, the markings, the spring markings that they have to say I'm beautiful, come and mate with me. I love the patterning on their chest. And I'm going to come in and straighten that out with my harder brush just to make sure I've got what the shape that I'm looking for. Standing back and looking. Okay. Well, yes, 
I will put a big sign that says, did you turn the sound on? <laughs> Before we leave, because I started with this and you would have seen it, I have the uh, pine grosbeak beak completed. I'm trying to get it out of the light. The pine grosbeak beak completed and the auction is live on eBay and it will be below. And, uh, oh, I guess I should turn them this way. Like everything is topsy-turvy today. It's been one of those days. Um, I'm really pleased with this pine grosbeak. beak. I really like how it turned out. Um, it, it did everything I wanted it to do and I thank you for voting for it. We, I will work some more on this and next week we will get the rest, we will get to the final parts and, uh, and then I'll do the metal stuff not on camera because that takes focus and being flat. Anyway, thank you for, if you stayed while I was talking in the, and you were just watching Painting in Silence, thank you. <laughs> and if you came in late, <laughs> well, thank you anyway for coming. We'll uh, see you next week with a big sign that says, remember to put on the microphone. Talk to you later. <laughs>